How much do you think my bus max weighs? Well, we're gonna find out. Get on the bus. Today I'm gonna go get weighed. Well, not me, the bus. At the beginning of the rebuild, right after we had taken everything out of the bus to do the floor, I went to a public scale to see what max weighed empty. I was really curious about this because I never weighed this bus, like full or empty, before. And I know when I go to Brimfield, I'm probably over, well, I'm definitely overloaded when I go to Brimfield. And when I made the initial trip across the country after I closed the store, I'm pretty sure I was really heavy then too, but like day to day, every day, ordinarily, I don't have a clue. I have a lot less stuff than a lot of people, but I do have a lot of tools and a lot of hardware, which are both very heavy things. And I keep those because I'm, I just feel like I'm constantly rebuilding and I never know what I might need, so. But the main reason I'm so curious is because I get a lot of questions about and comments about the fact that my bus is furnished with antiques. Some people love it and they find it inspiring. It makes them feel like they can do whatever they want with their own bus. Other people just think I'm nuts. They say that antiques are too heavy or too fragile or too old. Yeah, antiques are old. Secrets out. 200 year old table bumping around on unpaved roads. It seems dumb on the surface, but that piece of furniture has lasted 200 years. You see all kinds of Ikea cabinets in schoolies and is there anybody who thinks that an Ikea cabinet is still gonna be around in 200 years? So here's me after getting weighed empty. Okay, 7,520 pounds, that's it. Which is amazing because I can go up to 10, almost uh, 11,000 pounds. So I am confident that I will not be overweight. Except that my math was totally wrong. I don't know why I did this, but I added my two GAWRs together and decided that was my GVWR, which it isn't. Okay, let's take a look. You'll usually find the weight information on the inside of the door on a sticker, and that's where I looked. And here it says front and rear GAWR, and there's a weight listed. The GAWR stands for the Gross Axle Weight Rating, and theoretically it's telling you what each axle is rated to be able to carry. You would think that you could add them together and that would tell you what the total weight of the vehicle could be, but that's not how it works. Okay, the GVWR stands for Gross Vehicle Weight Rating, and that's generally lower than the two axle weight ratings added together. And that's because the axle weight is just the static weight pressing down, but the vehicle weight is taking into account the ability not just to support the load, but to actually move the load. If you max out both of your axle weights, you're definitely gonna be over the GVWR. That becomes a safety issue. I thought I had 10,284 pounds. I have 9,500 pounds, which is the GVWR. That's a big difference. That's like 800 pounds of difference. Definitely not as confident. But wait a second, now we look here, we look below this and there's another sticker. The first one's put on here by Ford in June of 1991 and it shows a GVWR of 9,500 pounds. Then Lewis Buss, who made the, the body, they put a sticker on here in August of 1991 and they've upped the GVWR to 10,000 pounds, even though the axle weights are the same. And I'm confused about why that would be, but 10,000 is better than 9,500 I don't know which one we're supposed to pay attention to, but let's just do this and see where we land. As we fly on, fly on, just like we always do. We're taking the pretty route. Yeah, at this time of day, traffic-wise, it probably makes more sense to go this way. So what do I weigh? Not me, the bus. Personally, I, have, I don't have a very good relationship with scales. We had a scale in the house when I was a kid. In fact, I think it's the same scale that's in the house now. But um, I don't remember, like as a, I don't remember as a kid, like really being particularly obsessive about weighing myself until like sixth grade. Because in sixth grade, they did what I call the weigh-a-thon. Um, they took the scale out of the school nurse's office and put it in the middle of the hallway and they lined up all the kids and they just weighed everybody right there in the middle of the hallway. And the school nurse 
when you got off the scale, she would yell your weight out to her assistant to write on a chart. So, like, everybody heard everybody else's weight. Except I wasn't really listening to anybody else's weight because um, I was just so concerned with the fact that they were going to read mine, you know? So, they finally did read mine, and I weighed 100 pounds, which I don't know if that's... I don't know how high, I know that's a little high because I was a little chubby for sure, but I don't know how high that is for a sixth grader. I don't know. At that point though, what are you, like 11 in sixth grade? I had been, like since I was nine, I had been actively trying to will my body not to grow anymore because um, because at nine, all of a sudden I grew one boob, like one, like a full-on hooter, <laughs> only on the left though right side's completely flat. So I had this one boob at nine. And my name then was, my last name was Biggins. So that became Mary Big Ones pretty quick. Yeah, nine year old with one boob named Biggins. You're a little self-conscious about your body, I'd say. I know that's probably TMI, but you know what? You guys know me, there's nothing TMI. We let it all hang out here. Okay, what do you think it was? Guess. What's your guess? Come on. What's your guess? 9,000 pounds. That's it. 9,000 pounds. Of course, that's the weight without me or Captain on the bus, but I don't think we're going to kick it over. I can start collecting rocks if I wanted to. I mean, I'm not going to start collecting rocks. Just like we always do.